guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Johanna and for those of you who are new here, welcome. And for those of you who are returning, welcome back. Here on my channel, I do planner and planner related videos, DIY tutorials, budget videos, and the occasional new release video of items that I've listed to my Etsy shop. And if that is of interest to you, please consider subscribing to my channel. And if you hit that little notification bell, you'll always be notified of when I load a new video. Commenting, liking, and sharing does help my channel grow and would be truly appreciated. All right guys, so I'm a little excited. I finally got one of these and this is gonna be my Hobonichi Weeks setup for 2020. It just came. I picked this up from Amazon, so I'm going to take it out of its wrapper and I'll be right back. Alrighty, so this is it right here. It sort of has like a, kind of like a fake plastic. I mean, this is not leather. It kind of feels like it, but it isn't. It's, I mean, it's not unpleasant. It's just, it definitely has a scent. Hobonichi. And there's some stuff in here. So this is a little pocket that you can put inside. And this is, oh, how interesting. A railway map for 2019. And I wonder if this is just for Tokyo. Um, Maybe this is all of Japan? I don't know, it's in Japanese, so I, I couldn't tell you. But it's very colorful and I, I like the feel of it. Although the glare is probably insane. Put that to the side. And then it comes with this right here. This is my life. And for this girl, she gets up and her friends are out, she eats sushi and hot dog, plays with animals, figures out what she's going to wear, says either good morning or good night to the day, and then has some really weird rain fall on her that looks like her friend. So I'm not sure what that is. <laughs> oh, and then there's this here. Happy nothing special day. Oh like that. Happy Nothing Special Day. Cool. Alrighty. Now, I've actually been having my eyes on getting a Hobonichi Weeks uh, since about May of last year. That's actually what started me down the path of the Happy Nichi because I was watching some people on YouTube, and I think it was Anika from Anika's Creative Plans. I think that's what it's called. I'll link her channel below. And I was telling her I loved her Hobonichi Weeks, um, but I just... I didn't know if a book bound system would work for me. And she said, oh, well go check out Magical Plans on YouTube because she had just converted her half sheet happy notes into sort of a dupe, not really, but sort of. And so that's what got me started. But I still, I still have been wanting one of these. My friend Kelly here on YouTube, she has just gone to town in hers and she does um, both planning and it's artistic and she does lots of tippins and it's just it's absolutely gorgeous so this is the Hobonichi Teisho 2019 weeks for spring I actually don't know if this is a it's an April start okay now you you probably have a, a little bit of concern because I, I just said a little while ago, this was my Hobonichi Weeks for 2020, and it absolutely is. However, I don't need another actual planner where it, it I can correspond days to the actual day. And so when I saw this on Amazon, it was only $10. Um, I don't mind the cover. I'm pretty sure I could cover it up. I did order a jelly cover from an Etsy shop, so I'm, I'm waiting on that. But really, what I plan to use with this is I, I'm going to make this into sort of a tracker art journal because um, I hear that the paper is actually really good for uh, watercolors and, and things like that. So I wanted to test that out. I don't know that the paper has a smell, but it's definitely thin. 
and I knew that. It's the Tamoy River paper, and so the reason why they can get a planner this thin is because the paper is super thin, and yet it's, it's supposed to be really durable. Now what I'm going to do, uh, or at least my plan for this is, um, again, it's going to be an art journal. It doesn't matter what it says up here. I am going to use this as sort of a, a tracker of sorts, if just to put um, a, a word of the day or whatever. Again, it doesn't matter. I just, I want the action of doing it. It doesn't matter the, the, the day. So whenever I start this, which will probably be later today, it goes in box number one. And then I'm basically just gonna go down the line until I hit over here. So again, none of, none of the dates matter in here. For the monthly overview, I think every week I'm gonna come in with either a, a phrase of the day, a quote of the day, and then I might even track my sleep. But again, doesn't matter. It's just basically whenever I start week one, here. So again, like tonight. Now I might put a date of when I do it just so that I'm, when I'm looking at this, you know, a year from now, I can see this is the date that I started. But that's why having an old Hobonichi did not bother me at all because I'm, I'm not going to use it as, as a planner. Now the Hobonichi does have, this is a year at a glance. I believe that's what they're calling it. And then this is the monthly overview, and all of the monthly overviews are back to back. It does go until uh, April, so it's like 13 months, so it starts the month before. So if this were 2019, it would have started in March of 2019, and it ends in April 2019. And I think they do that uh, so that it gives you a little time before and after to uh, work into your new book, which I think is fantastic. And then it goes into these weekly um, set up here where you've got your uh, days of the week here and then you've got some pages here. And I've been watching um, some videos on Hobonichi weeks and there is a little dot here right there so if you wanted to turn this into a like a vertical I mean it's still horizontal that way but you would be able to have some boxes there the lines on this side let me get something that I can point with. Uh, they actually correspond to the lines on that side. So if you really just wanted to extend this into one long horizontal, you could. Uh, I've seen people uh, track the weather in this little box because there is a line right there. And so everything corresponds really nicely. And then this is in Japanese and I think it's a, a quote of, of some kind. And then it goes through the weeks. And again, it starts February. Oh, that's awesome. Actually, it starts the last week of February because it wants to incorporate March. And then it goes all the way through March of the following year. And then it's got a whole bunch of these graphed note pages. And it's got all of these things. Oh, I guess you could measure how long that is and put that there and then you'd have all that down. I'm not sure why that would be something you'd want to write down, but I think it's cool. <laughs> You've got a little um, ruler here, just based on looking at it, it's probably like centimeters or millimeters that, that looks too small for inches. But again, it is a Japanese planner, so that makes sense. And then I guess there are things that happen on certain days, if I'm looking at that correctly. Again, very cool. Not sure what any of that says. I don't know if that's a recipe. And there's an app that you can get for your phone that translates, so I might get that and see what these things say and maybe incorporate some of this into the, the front part of it. 
and it looks like contacts of some kind. <laughs> and then in the back, it's just basically um, paper. All right, so what I thought I would do today is actually, let me go to the back and we'll go on this sheet right here. And I know that the book bound system is not for me, but again, I think because I'm only planning to work on this maybe once or twice a week and just really enjoy the process and relax with it, um, it's not going to be that bad. I, I like that it's portable, and if you're from the Happy Planner world, uh, just to give you some scope. This is the Skinny Mini, this is the DIY DIY version that I made. So from a height perspective, it is just slightly higher if I line up the paper, if you can see that. And then it's actually a little bit wider, uh, just to give you an idea of how big that is. Like I said, I'm gonna test out some pens, because I hear because it is, I'm gonna work like this. Because it is both thin and slick, um, there are just some pens that don't work well. So this is my high tech, this is the Coletto five in red. And this is a 0.4 lead. And actually that feels okay. And this is a mono drawing pen uh, from Tombow in point one. Just drop it. <laughs> mono drawing pen in point one. That felt good too. And it's so tiny, um, so. It, it can actually fit on the little graph there because the graph is quite small. This is my Fuji pen and this is 0 0.38. That one feels fine. And then I'll get my high tech C. C. And this is a point. All right, so that one sat for a while. Let's see if it smears. No, 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 and I'll let that one sit. And then the High Tech Coletto, um, some of it has bled through and you can definitely feel some ridging. Now, all of these are sharp points, so that makes sense to me. I'm also a bit heavy-handed, but the other ones, although you can feel it, and it definitely ghosts, it doesn't bleed. There are some spots there that it does bleed through. All right, well, that's good to know. And then I wanted to test some inks. Now, what Kelly does in hers is she does washes sometimes, um, she does, she uses stickers, I mean, she, she goes to town. So I, I wanted to try that myself. Now she did send me this ink, it's Distress Ink from Tim Holtz. I don't know that it's waterproof, it doesn't say that. And so I'm just gonna use this as just a simple ink pad for this purpose. Because I think you could just use it um, as like a wash. I think that's what she actually does. And this stamp I had made for me uh, when I had first opened my Etsy shop. And I'll show you the image in just a minute. And actually, let me put that on the monthly. Again, this is really going to be an art journal. And my whole plan for this is I don't want to use any stickers or washi. It's either going to be coloring, um, markers, pencils, watercolor, or ink. That's all I'm going to do in this. 
Ooh, that's quite juicy. Maybe I should have blotted. It's a lovely color too. image right there. Um, what that means for me and to me is uh, this is some artwork that my sister had drawn um, on a lunch bag for me and I had scanned it and then sent it to them and they were able to scale it down. I think this is like one or one and a half inches or <clears throat> um, it's, I think it's like less than an inch that way and then a little taller than an inch that way. Um, but that. I had it in my stash and I, I just recently came across it again and so uh, I might actually put this on every page because I just I like looking at her artwork and yep the thing with the Des Moines River and I've heard of this is that it does seem to sit on the paper and so what I'm going to do because even though this is going to be an art journal I I don't want it to be messy, or at least not at this point. So I'm just going to put sort of a blotter action here. And then that way it doesn't get on the other page. And the other thing I wanted to do today, and I don't know if I said it, this was gonna be a setup. Well, I guess it is, sort of, if you call testing around and, and playing in your stuff a setup. Um, this stays on ink I picked up from Amazon, and this is supposed to be waterproof. And then this ink I bought at the craft slash bake sale earlier this year, and um, I think it's really gorgeous. So I'm going to stamp ink this up, stamp it in, and then I'm going to let it dry. And once it's dry, then I'll come back and I'll do a little bit of painting and give you my thoughts. All right, so I stamped it there, and I think that looks lovely. I don't know if I moved it or if it has that edge. Yeah, I think I might have moved it slightly because some of the letters um, have a bit of a shadow. And then as to not waste the ink, uh, then I did some stamping over here, and I actually really like how that looks. Now this is an old, um, it's, it's a plastic cover that I put a piece of paper behind, and this is going to be sort of my palette thing. And, oh, okay. So the ink comes through. Again, that's not going to be a problem for me, but just, just beware of that. <laughs> Uh, because it is going to be wet though, I am going to put a piece of paper underneath. I'm thinking um, once I get more use out of this and I play 
throughout the weeks and months and whatnot that this is going to get just loved in and wrinkled and crumpled and I'm, I'm going to love it. So yay. Now, uh, I don't have watercolors in a pan just yet. If you know, I've you know me I've ordered some from Amazon but they're not here so I'm going to use my sangria pens here and this is the um, water pen that came with it so I'm going to try to get some organization going on and so there's water in here and then what I'm gonna do is just kind of wet the surface And even though I didn't let it dry very long, I just did some blotting, it did seem, I, I don't see any smudging at all. So I'm just wetting the flowers. Oh, I guess I can squeeze that. I've never used the one of these kind of pens. I'm not sure how it's supposed to work. You can definitely see it buckling. And then I'm gonna come in and add some of this. Just in the center. And because it's a little wet and you can see the ones that I didn't get it does want to spread and we'll layer on another color not being precise and I'll show you why in a little bit just push the color around and sort of fade it. And then for some of the flowers up there, we'll actually test something else out. Oh, that looks pretty. Okay, and then for up there, we'll put the color here. And the reason I put the white behind is so that I could see the color, because that's not always a thing for me. And we'll put some of that there. Is that the same color? No, it looks slightly darker. And don't want to have the... <laughs> books it in it and we'll sort of wash that hmm, I'm not sure which one I like better that <laughs> and I don't know if it's because this is a water pen that the tip is inherently more juicier I, I don't know or if it's well I mean yeah I guess there's no no plunger or anything that's holding back the water so I guess that makes sense Oh, that's pretty. All right, so, well, no, I have some other ones that my mom gave me. That doesn't go there. She 
he had some water pens, so, all right, let's do some green. And really, the, this the whole thing I'm doing right now is what I pick this book up for. I do want to just have a place to play because I do have my commonplace journal, but that one is more for uh, thoughts and quotes and things. Oh, guys. <laughs> but this one is really, uh, I either want to do some stamping or I want to do some drawing. I definitely want to do some watercolor in here and I might do washes of things like my friend Kelly does and there's definitely going to be some journaling in here but I, I do want to try to be more intentional about giving myself not only the time but the permission to to play oh that's gorgeous. All right, so while that's drying or getting a little bit drier, I'm actually going to do some journaling here and here. And when I'm done with that, I'll bring you guys back. All right, guys, this is it. And I have to tell you, I am loving how this looks. I think, I think we have a bunch of stamps because that definitely does make it easy. Although I do want to do some drawing in here as well. And I, I'm gonna tell you, I have sort of an, an addictive um, obsessive personality and I can actually just see myself Christmas weekend just filling this up and playing. <laughs> I really can. All right, so 
on this side there definitely is some ghosting especially with the black ink but not so much with the the um color and I just use uh, just a very light wash and I actually really like how that looks it did a little bit of journaling there on this page there definitely is more Let me put that there there is more that you can see but to be perfectly honest um, when I get to this week um, I might use this as a drawing surface and then keep that as is. I like how it sort of ghosts and bleed through and looks sort of ghosty. Um, <laughs> you know, like it's through a fog versus how bright it is here. I, I like that it's obviously similar and yet it, it does give me um, a different feel and I can still play and do some drawing here and some journaling and I think that'd be really cute. Oh, guys, the book bound, well, I have to remember this is wet. The book bound thing drives me a little bit of crazy, but if this isn't something that I'm going to be in for writing, because for painting, it doesn't matter, uh, but for writing, that's, that's where it, it bothers me the most. I think this is going to be a really fun project. I'm going to really have to try to hold myself back and not just fill it up in the next week or two. Although, I mean, I, I certainly could. But I really just want to have this as something that I, one, can look forward to, but also helps me just slow down uh, for a bit. I still also want to incorporate my commonplace. I, I do want to do some journaling. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll see how it goes. But I did want to show this to you guys and show you my thoughts on it. All right, guys, that's it for me for now. And as always, Aloha.